Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Bethel Assembly this morning. You're watching online with us. and This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice together and be glad in it. And today we're going to be celebrating uh, communion. So if you want to just take a couple moments and get your juice and whatever you're going to use, bread or cracker, uh, later on in the service we'll be partaking together so that you'll be ready. And uh, let's worship the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. to 
just sing that verse one more time. Yeah. could rescue. Praise God. I am so glad that you are joining us here for our live stream service. There's more in store, and this next song says he's our rescuer. Praise God. He's our rescuer, he's our rescuer, we are free from sin forevermore, oh how sweet the sound, oh how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord our Stand up and give the Lord a shout. Praise his name. He's our rescuer. Praise the Lord. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord. Oh, how grace abounds, we will praise the Lord. I 
world ignores. He is pastor for the weary. Rest for those who strive. Oh, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life.
in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, You're touching every heart. Right there in your home today, He's there. I worship you. He's there by His Spirit. He's there where I you are.
restoring, saving and healing, delivering captives and setting us free. It is a life everlasting to all who receive it, your blood, oh, it's small. It's renewing, restoring, saving and healing, delivering captives and setting us free. It is a life everlasting for all who receive it, your blood. Oh, it's more. you want to just get your communion in your homes there, get your juice and your cracker, we'll partake of it together.
on the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and and he blessed it. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we have. We're here and people are in their homes. But Lord, I thank you for your body. Jesus, your only begotten son, gave his life for us. He died for every sin of mankind. Thank you for that sacrifice. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that sacrifice that now you have washed us as we receive you. You gave us power to become sons of God simply because you've washed us whiter than snow. And so today we take the bread and we eat it and we remember that sacrifice in Jesus' name. Let us partake together. In the same way, the Bible says he took the cup. He blessed it as well, and I'm going to ask Shannon to pray. Blessing over the remembrance of the cup. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You willingly, you willingly laid down your life. You shed every drop of your blood for our redemption, Mm -hmm. for our salvation. It was the new covenant in your blood, a new covenant, a new promise of salvation and freedom from sin. And today we bless you, Lord, and we thank you, and we remember the sacrifice you made. Let's partake together. Oh, I'm so glad for the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. John the Baptist saw him a long time ago. Thank you, Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And because he has redeemed us, we can worship him. Glory to God. We shall Hallelujah. worship him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And with our hands lifted high, we will worship and sing. With our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just tell him that we're loving our King. Our King, we will worship the Lamb of Glory, and we will worship the King of Kings, and we will worship the Lamb of Glory, we will worship the Oh, 
our hands lifted high to the sky when the world wonders why we'll just tell him that we're loving our king oh we'll just tell him I bless the name of the Lamb of Glory. I bless the name of the King of Kings. <laughs> yeah. I bless the name of the Lamb of Glory. I bless the name of the King. I bless the name of the Lamb of Glory. I bless the name of the King of Kings. I bless the name of the Lamb of Glory. I bless the name of the King. And with our hands we did high, we will worship and sing. Our hands lifted high, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just tell him that we're loving our King. Oh, we'll just tell him that we're loving. We'll just tell. Him that we're loving our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is the King. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon. <laughs> We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going Did you, but I just <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Praise the Lord. Oh, I trust that you were praising and shouting and rejoicing with us today. Praise the Lord. I have a couple of announcements before we go into the word. <clears throat> and uh, next Sunday is Mother's Day, and uh, this is going to be a very unique opportunity for us to celebrate Mother's Day in a, a little different way. And so uh, we've entitled next week's service as Women Talking About Women. Now, sometimes when you hear that phrase, you think of gossip. But uh, that's not what we're going to do next Sunday. We're not going to stand around and gossip about one another. But we're going to have some women sharing about other women that have ministered in their lives. Not maybe just mothers, but other women that have influenced them. So we want you to join with us. That's next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. And our live stream schedule for the week, uh, there's devotions with myself, 10 a.m. Uh, Monday morning. Wednesday evening at 7 is our Bible study and prayer share. Friday evening is usually some gospel music. You can sing along or hymn sing. And then our Sunday evening service. 
And I'd like to also mention, um, I know we sent out our announcements to uh, all of our Bethel congregation, but uh, Sunday nights were our, was our intercessory prayer at 6.30 p.m., but we are not able to join together. But if you can take some time at 6.30 on Sunday evenings, and there's a prayer guide for each week, we thank those who have been praying uh, during our fasting and prayer week. And, but this is a weekly guide that you can follow prayer emphasis, so just keep that in mind, uh, that Sunday evenings at 6.30. And then later on in May, starting on the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st, there's a, a new series, The Power of the Holy Spirit, and it's leading up to Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, so we're going to be rejoicing together with the power of the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do in our lives. So we rejoice in that and just watch us on our live stream. Thank you so much for your continued giving financial support to the ministry and if you have been watching our live stream and you would like to send a donation that's totally up to you but there's three ways that we can give uh, our congregation where uh, the, the church is available Tuesdays and Thursdays between 9 30 and 3 just knock on the door there's a drop box inside the foyer you can send a check by mail pay payable to Bethel Assembly or bank e-transfer and you can get in touch with us for further information on that. Info at BethelWoodstock.ca. The Lord bless you. And uh, Pastor Ron, ready to preach the word of the Lord this morning. Well, praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm so glad the King is coming. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Glory to Jesus. Huh. I just got a thought. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming, the King is coming, praise God, he's coming for me. The marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the street. All the builders, tools are silent. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors in the courtroom. No debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate. Oh, the King is coming. <laughs> the King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whether you realize it or want to recognize it, Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I would suggest that if you're in a room sitting with a family member, that you say, The King, turn, just turn to him and say, The King is coming. Yes, he is. So this morning, I would like to share a little bit for a little for a little bit 
and how to live in a messed up world while we're waiting for the king to come. Jesus said it like this. He says, occupy until I come. Well, so I would like to turn you to turn in your Bibles to Re Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to give you the bad news, and then I'm going to give you the good news. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm not going to read the entire chapter 13. I'm just simply going to start with verse 11. You can read the, the things that transpired before verse 11. I'm going to start there. Then I saw another beast come out of the earth. He had two horns like those of a lamb, but he spoke with the voice of a dragon. He exercised all the authority of the first beast, and he required all the earth and its people to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. He did astounding miracles. He even making the fire to flash down to the earth from the sky while everyone was watching. And with all the miracles he allowed, he was allowed to perform on behalf of the first beast. Listen to this next verse. He deceived all the people who belonged to this world. He deceived all the people who belonged to this world. We just sang the king is coming. I, 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 I believe with all of my heart, this is not something that I'm wishing for so that I can get caught up out of this mess. I believe the king is coming. He is not going to come according to our timetable. He is going to come according to his timetable. I would suggest to you that it is probably closer to the calendar of the Jewish people as opposed to our calendar. But all he deceived all the people who belonged to this world. The king is coming. Praise God. I sang the last line. Praise God. He's coming for me. See, Jesus said it like this. You are not of this world. I am not of this world. That's what Jesus said. In fact, Jesus said it like this. Where I am, I want you to be also. In fact, I'm, I'm building many houses for you. You see. This one he deceives all the people who belong to this world. Which world do you belong to? Goes on to say, he ordered the people to make a great statue of the first beast who was fatally wounded and then came back to life. He was then permitted to give life to this statue so that it could speak. Then the statue of the beast commanded that everyone refusing to worship it must die. He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand and on the forehead. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was neither the name of the beast, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. We need wisdom in all this. Wisdom is needed here, verse 18 says. Let, no, let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is six Six, six. Now, I'm not going to try and dissect all of this to you, but I will tell you this. 
God, here's the good news. God already knows all things. The devil, he has to use technology to gain information. In fact, with that technology, he will try and gain control. God does not demand control, but God provided a plan through the death of his only son and raised him from the dead. And he simply asked that you and I surrender a voluntary action, I might add, a voluntary action on your part to surrender our lives to him so he can give us a new life. Praise the Lord. You know, it's really hard to gain control of people unless you identify people. Cards can be copied, but you cannot copy something that is embedded in skin. They talk about a microchip that has been created that will go on the back of the hand and underneath the hairline on your forehead. You say, well, Pastor Ron, how can all this be possible? Well, first of all, the Bible said that it was possible. The other thing is that man is trying to do all that they can. We've all heard, I'm sure, about the scenarios by now of a, of a chip that will be embedded in uh, the skin along with your vaccine. But I want, to, I want to tell you and share this just out of the Word of God. I'm going to let the Word of God speak for itself. The better news is coming. I told you that. Revelation 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple say to the seven angel, Go your ways and pour out on the earth the seven bowls containing God's wrath. Okay? Verse 2 says, So the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth. And horrible, malignant sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his statue. The King James Version says it like this. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell noisome, or grievous sores upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. There are days, troublesome days coming. Troublesome days. When you look at that word mark, it's a scratch or an etching, or something graven, a mark, as a, it's a badge, a sculptured thing, that is a a sharpened point that uh, you will have engraved in that uh, chip all your information. I heard it said this past week that it talked about that mark, that uh, chip being in your skin, that uh, they will will promote it as as being, uh, you don't have to worry about long lineups. Um, People that I've talked to about the way that shopping is right now, they're standing in long lineups waiting to get into the store. Well, you won't even need to have uh, uh, tellers at the the cash registers to take your money because you'll have all the the products will will have this this, uh, embedded thing implanted in each of the products. So um, as long as you got that mark, you can carry your your groceries or whatever your product out through through a scanner. It'll automatically come out of your account. There's all kinds of scenarios about this. But the bad news about all this, that those that take the mark, the Bible says this, that those that take the mark will have a a noisome or a malignant sore, which is upon those that take the mark, upon them that worship his image. The uh, part of the word in that 666, when you look at it, it means to stick or to prick or an engrave a mark for identity. 
And they call it an RFID microchip. That's what it's called. But this thing will somehow break down, whether it's a battery or something in it, there's something that will break down in that chip that will cause a sore, a injurious, a bad, a wicked, a mischievous, uh, uh, an evil influence that into your body. It is a foreign substance that will be planted in and it will be a sore, the scripture says. Revelation chapter 14 says, Then a third angel followed, shouting, Anyone who worships the beast and his statue or who accepts his mark on, on the forehead or on the hand must drink the wine of God's anger. Isn't it better to submit your life to Jesus Christ? I'm not trying to scare you into heaven. That's not what I'm about. I just want to make you aware of the days that are coming. There's a better way to live. There's a healthier way to live. They will have no relief, day or night, for they have worshipped the beast and his statue and have accepted the mark of his name. Somebody said it to me like this. There are great, that's actually in the scripture, there are great and terrible days. It'll be great for the believer, but terrible for the unbeliever. You know, now is the time to turn your life over to Christ and to become that new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, I said to you, I was going to give you some good news, and I will. And it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm simply going to read it out of the Message Bible because it says it clearer. And it's very concise and it says all that I want to say today. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. I don't think, friends, that I need to deal with the question of when all this is going to happen. I don't know when all this is going to happen. You know as well that the day of the master's coming can't be posted on our calendars. <laughs> Didn't I say this thing is not going to be going by man's calendars or the world's calendars? Our master can't be posted. The master of our of the, the day of our master's coming can't be posted on our calendars. He won't call ahead and make an appointment any more than a burglar would. About the time everybody's walking around complacently and, and congratulating each other, we've got it made. Now we can take it easy. Suddenly everything will fall apart. It's, gonna, it's going to come as suddenly and in, inescapably as birth pangs to a pregnant woman. But friends, here's the good news. You know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. God didn't set us up for an angry rejection, but for salvation by our master. Jesus Christ, he died for us, a death that triggered life. Whether we awake with the living or sleep with the dead, we are alive with him. So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so that you all be together in this one. With no one left out, no one left behind. And the apostle says, I, I know you're already doing this. Just keep on doing it. That's the encouraging thing. Just keep on doing it. And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in, in obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. That's how we were supposed to treat our leadership, see. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your own part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get on the move. Gently encourage the stragglers and, and, and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person, attentive to individual needs, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. 
Look for the best in each other. And always do your best to bring it out. Be cheerful. Here's a good word. Especially in this day. And all the world is a mess. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God for no matter what happens. This way. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. We've just been given instruction that if you belong to Christ Jesus, this is how you are to live. Goes on to say, don't suppress the spirit. Don't stifle those who have a word from the master. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out everything else that's tainted with evil. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together. See, this is the thing. This is how you can live in a messed up world. Give yourself to God. He's the one that can make you whole. And he's the one that can make you holy. He's the one that can put you to all together in spirit, soul, and body. And he can keep you fit. What's the scripture say? He can keep you fit for the coming of our master. Glory to God. Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. Now, how do you live in a world that's all messed up? Turn your life to Jesus because he's completely dependable. You may not understand his ways. In fact, his ways are higher than our ways. But he's completely dependable. If he said it, he's going to do it. Friends, Keep yourselves. Keep up your prayers for us. Greet all the followers of Jesus there. Now this scripture, this part of the scripture, you're not going to be able to do right now. It says, with a holy embrace. (laughs) Oh, glory to God. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? That the God who made us the God who put us together, the God who cares for us. He cares for the sparrows. If he cares for the sparrows, he'll care for you. If he provides for the animals, he'll provide for you. He provided so much. We've been talking about it the last number of, of weeks at our, in our prayer and share um, evenings on Wednesday nights, Shannon and I, talking about Jesus in the boat. He cares, he cares, he cares. When you're hungry, he cares. He can feed, he fed 4,000 one time, he fed 5,000 another time. If he can do that, he, he can take care of you. See, the king is coming. We know he's coming. He is going to come. He is going to come. Praise God. He is going to come. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I gave my life to you, and I, because I have given you, you give my life, I have peace. I have complete peace. Glory to God. Peace that surpasses understanding, that guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. I thank you for that peace. Glory to God. So, Lord, that's the reason why I want to raise my hands to you, and I want to worship you as the Lamb of God. Glory to God, the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. That's why I want to worship you. Glory to Jesus, for you are coming. You are coming. Lord, I pray for those that are not ready for your coming. Uh Uh-huh. People that are not ready for your coming. I, I pray for those people that are wrapped up in fear and in turmoil, wondering about the this this pandemic and the things that it will bring and the things that will happen and the lines will have to stand in and all this, Lord, they're thinking about the things to come, but Lord, I I thank you for that peace that surpasses understanding that can guard hearts and minds. 
And I ask, oh God, that you would open their eyes, open their ears, and soften their hearts. They will see what you're doing. They will hear what you're doing. They will hear the rumble in the mulberry bush that you're coming, that the time is really close, and they'll, you'll soften their hearts. They'll turn to you so you can heal them. In Jesus' name, praise God. The King is coming, the King is coming, I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now His face I see, oh, the King is coming, the King is coming, praise God. sounding and now his face I see oh the king is coming the king is coming praise God he's coming for me Thank you for watching our uh, service. You can see uh, on the screen how you can connect with us. If you need, if you have questions or you need some prayer, uh, you, you just have some things that you need uh, some, some help through, don't hesitate to call us and connect with us. We would be honored to have you connect. And uh, may the Lord watch over you. In Jesus' name, watch, Lord, our comings and our goings, our rising and our sitting. And, Lord, make us a blessing and a help to those that are around us. In Jesus' name, amen.